Hello, gentle viewers. This is Abendian, welcoming you back to OOTP 21 with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, last episode, we completed the offseason. Uh, we've made a few changes to the team, and let's take a look. First of all, you'll notice that we are Noah Syndergaard -less. Uh Noah Syndergaard made a very smart and then very dumb decision to. First of all, very smartly, um, give up on, uh, sign a new contract with us for very cheap, but then he turned around and said, guess what, I'm going to lose all my velocity, so I cut him. Um, our lineup looks quite similar to last season's, with the exception of new first baseman, Jose Santoya, who I am very interested to see how he does, um... Over the course of a full season. He's got all the potential in the world. And I'd really like to see him succeed. Um, other than that, this is pretty much the same lineup as last season. With the addition of Robert Moore. Who replaces Luis Garcia. Um, now getting a full season to show off his talents. And Geraldo Perdomo perched atop. Playing third base and doing it well. Uh, we are trying Adley Rushman at cleanup, and I know it's been a while since we've tried this, but we're at a point where the only really great power hitter on the team right now is Kieran Dongo. Everyone else ranges from mediocre to actively terrible. Um, we have like a bunch of 20, 25, maybe 30 homer hitters. We don't have very many 40 homer hitters. As evidenced by Mr. Hendrick, who hit 40 home runs three seasons in a row and then dropped to 35 last year. Um, Hendrick is probably going to be leaving the team in a couple of seasons. But our salvation... Oh, our salvation... Is Danny Moreno. Um... There is very little he cannot do, in my opinion. Um, but he's still extremely raw. And I'm hoping that a full season in A-ball will get us closer to him making the majors. Because his potential, my friends, is mouth-watering. Uh, he's going to hit for contact. He's going to hit for power. He's not going to strike out a ton. He's going to draw walks. He's even got decent speed. He's not a great center fielder. But I think that will come with time. I think he just needs more games in the outfield to get used to it. He's only actually played 65 games. Which is silly, right? But it's true. And I'm hoping that he'll get a chance to play the outfield a bit more and improve his defensive talents so we can put him somewhere. The next aging player we're probably going to end up moving on from in the next two or three seasons, besides Hendrick, is probably going to be Daniel Cabrera. Uh, I cannot frankly see bringing him back at this salary. Uh, he has been the engine of our offense, and despite transitioning to being a part-time DH last season... Um, and let's be honest, he wasn't that great in left field when he did play. Um, has been a revelation. And if he can keep up that level of production, I might even give him a new contract. Um, our biggest salary concern right now is one Mike Vanderplerg. Who believes he deserves all of the money. And he's ridiculous for thinking that. There's also the Brandon Hendricks question. Now, last season, uh, he saw his ERA spike, but the rest of his peripherals looked pretty good. Strikeouts per nine was good. Walks per nine was good. Uh, his home run rate was pretty consistent. Uh, it looks like he was just a bit more unlucky compared to 2027. And that's the only reason that he hasn't been, uh, that he wasn't better. Um, we have a bunch of extension money now. So the question becomes, first of all, is anyone's contract expiring that we definitely want to try to bring back? 
I would not object to bringing back Sean Murphy. I think for what we need him for, a good defensive catcher that plays 60 games, that plays 50, 60 games a year and keeps Adley Rushman fresh for the playoffs, he is perfect. Um, we do have some catching prospects in the minors, but they're all in the high minors. Like, there isn't really anybody here that I would hand backup catcher to willingly, apart from maybe Gonzalez. If Sean Murphy will come back and won't ask for a big raise, I'll probably do it. He wants a pretty big raise. And there is just some part of me deep within my soul that says, no, no $5 million a year contracts or a backup catcher. That's frankly absurd. I can get a backup catcher of that quality for cheaper. I have no disillusions about that. Evan White, I don't even know if we're going to keep him this season. Uh, we're going to let him hit as because there is a flaw with Mr. Santoya. You don't hit the lefties too good. That's all Evan White is here for. He's here to platoon. And if Josh Roberts has a good season in AAA, he'll probably take over that job next season. Um... Now, the big question is, we're getting to the point where the elite cent the elite outfielders we had are now gone. And there's a few interesting players still in our franchise, but I think that's something we're probably going to try to track in the draft. Because one of Daniel Cabrera... Actually, Daniel Cabrera's not even an outfielder anymore. He's just a DH. Uh, Kieran Dongo is playing left field for us. Although, I don't know why. Oh, because he doesn't have any range anymore. Um, and maybe trading Vanderplurg is the answer there. I'm still going to let play him as long as I can. Um, but that's where we are right now. Uh, going forward, we have some tough decisions to make. Uh, 2032 is going to be a big year of big decisions. As we could see three of our best players leave the team or stay with the team. And it really entirely depends on how they're doing and whether they're worth keeping. Um, let's have a chat with Mr. Hendricks. I want you for four years... How does this sound? This is a contract I can live with. Um, maybe tossing a team option at the end here with a $2 million buyout. You know what? Perfect. I have no qualms whatsoever about a nice contract like that. If he signs it, we'll maybe talk to a couple of other players whose contracts are coming up. Um... I categorically refuse to pay um, a Vanderpler like $15 million a year to be a very good but very flawed center fielder. I just, I can't do that. It is not in my DNA. No hit by Catherine of Aragon. That's quite a trick. Uh, Chris Thomas can come back from the disabled list. Do I want him back right now? Or do I want him... I think I want him to take some time in the minors. Actually, I think I just want him in the minors. Because his Major League debut last season was pretty terrible and yes is a better defense would have improved his era i'm gonna let him start the year in triple a and we'll let him just get some work in player development any big names here i 
Uh, Josh Roberts is getting better. That's a very good sign. Nate Gould got better. Here's Danny Moreno getting better. Um, he's still obviously a very long way from the majors, though. When does the prospect pipeline think he'll be ready? I'm just curious. So if we look at my team. 2032, you think he's two years away, and I don't think I disagree with you. Conversely, you think Danny Huaracho will be ready next year. You think Steve Willett is ready this year. Maybe. Nate Gould is fair. Um, that's a very fair assessment that he's probably ready right now. And if I didn't have someone like Santoya, I just want people getting on base right now. That's been a real issue for us over the past couple of seasons. Uh, why is Ricky Perez designated for assignment? I mean, all right, I'll send him down to AAA, but I don't remember signing him. Huh. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, let's continue. The fans really, the players are like Bobby Dwyer. Who the hell is Bobby Dwyer? I don't know who that is. Or you're trying to tell me to trade for Bobby Dwyer. You're not even my player. Wait, what? How does this say you have a contract with me, but he's playing for Boston? Oh, were you a were you a, a rule five pick? Oh, here it is. You took him in the rule five and you gave him back to me. All right, fine. Uh, triple A for you, please. Like, I'm not upset about that. I'm actually quite pleased that we have him back, but, yeah. And he may be getting playing time sooner than anyone expected. Losing Hendrick is a blow to our, our offense. I don't think there's any getting around that. Um, Bobby Dwyer is probably the closest thing to a major league ready outfielder. Like, I've got lots of other players with a lot more raw talent. Uh, Gould is first only, Roberts is first only, Klein is first base and bad at that. Creo plays all over the diamond. But I find his future to be more of a backup. Yeah, I mean, Bobby Dwyer, you're in the big leagues now. Because I think you're going to be a much more efficient hitter than anyone else. Oh, do you have a hole in your swing? No, you are exactly the same hitter against both sides. Uh, Karen Dongo's going to hit fifth. Santoya is going to hit six. I really don't want a lot of pressure on Mr. Dwyer. So enjoy right field. And enjoy right field. There we go. Problem solved. I can also shift Santoya to first and call up Gould. Um. Is he a good right fielder? He's not. He's got a great arm, but that's it. Can I please get through a full week of the season? Thank you. And Brandon Hendricks did sign a brand new deal. And I think it's a good one. 
I think this is the kind of deal we're not likely to regret. Um, and that's always kind of my standard. Um, I think it was Douglas Brainerd who commented last uh, last week's episode that one of the things he's most impressed about is my ability to keep my payroll reasonable. Um, I go with the good advice of Brain Tricky is I'd rather get rid of a player a year early than a year late. Um, and as long as you constantly have more and more talent being injected in your organization through the draft, through the waivers, through a few other things, uh, you're going to have a pretty good time. Uh, Tim Stack, you're going to the minors. We also are desperately in need of an improvement in the starting rotation. Not a long-term one, necessarily, but I do think we need more talent in the rotation. Um, oh, poor Chris Thomas. He just got back from injury, and he's injured again. Oh, well. We're off to a pretty slow start this season. Um, both of you are role players, and if you don't like it, you can go to hell. Now I know why you're grumpy. You're grumpy because we're losing. And we're losing because we're not scoring runs, and the entire rotation is shitting the bed. Even Jack Leiter. All of this will, will get better. All of this will get better. Uh, Kieran Dongo is maybe not we hope what we hoped for. There's room for improvement. But keep in mind, barely anyone has even 100 plate appearances. So we have lots of time to make the necessary adjustments. And I'm certainly not going to freak out yet. Player development, Andy Neal's stamina improved, Santoya's dipped a bit. A lot of prospects across the board are getting worse overall, which isn't what you like to see, including Mathis Lawson. I had a lot riding on him. Danny Huaracha's a bit better, Sean Ocasio is... Some of Dan Reynolds gotten worse at center field. And Doug Smart's gotten better. So, it's going to take time, I think. The important thing is not to overreact to a slow start. All right, how has Bobby Dwyer handled the majors? Not great. I think it's time to bring him, to bring back Austin Hendrick. And I'm wondering if this is going to be the shot in the arm that our offense needs. I wonder if we go boop and boop and boop and boop. If we're going to start seeing offenses improve. And we're going to see what happens. Um... Because Austin Hendrick was a big, has been a big part of our offense. Uh, oh, shit. Well, that's not great. Uh, Mr. Jimenez, our closer, is now out for the season. Um, oh, so Chris Thomas just got hurt. Man, what crappy timing for him. Like, there is a golden spot open for him in the rotate in the bullpen, and, and now he's going to miss out on it. Um, I am not letting Kurt Hanna within 100 freaking miles of my bullpen right now. I'd rather call up Anthony, Alex Perez, and let him get in some long relief work. Uh, 
Uh, the new closer is going to be... Break. Let's try this without a closer and just use closer by committee uh, for a couple of weeks and see how that works out for us. All right, I'm going to, to issue a warning to my pitching coach. Fix this shit. We're coming off of three World Series titles in a row and five and four in the last five. I am not going to tolerate a losing record when my entire pitching staff regresses simultaneously. That could also be a sign that the defense is significantly worse. Oh, come on this season. Now Daniel Cabrera breaks his finger. What the shit? Is this just because we had to get a new trainer and our new trainer is just terrible? Um, I guess I'm going to call up Nate Gould, who's at least hitting like a house of fire. Um, is anybody right now really high contact and using that contact to great advantage not really jose santoya has been struggling a bit so you know what mr gould uh you're gonna be dhing and you're gonna be playing the number three slot for a bit and i don't know if you can handle this but frankly we're gonna have to find out you're not great against left-handed pitching um Mm -mm -mm. Fuck. What do I do about you? Um, look, I guess everyone else gets bumped up and you just end up hitting like eighth or something. Because I have to bat you somewhere until Cabrera gets back. All right. Fuck you, Yankees. You did that deliberately, you pieces of crap. You're pissed that I've been doing so well these past few seasons, and so you have a damn pitcher hit him. Oh, for fuck's sake, really? Man, when it rains, it freaking pours. Um, look, I'm going to call up Chris... Uh, Chris Stack when he recovers from his injury. Or Chris Thomas, sorry. You know what? I'm going to activate him now. Wait, where'd he go? What's going on? I took him off the injury list and then he just vanished. Oh, here he is. Yeah, I'm going to have you just pitch middle relief for now, and then as soon as you're healthy, you can pitch, but I need you, my dude. I think this is just one of these seasons where OOTP just says, fuck you, and you just lose. Um, because we're now 60 games into the season. And maybe it's just the AL East is just hyper-competitive this season. We do have two teams tied for first and three teams tied for second. But damn. We do have an older team, right? And so certain players are just going to get a bit worse. And there's not much I can do about that. But shit. Like, the entire rotation is garbage. The bullpen is nothing special. Um, the lineup is okay. The lineup has rebounded a bit. But yeah, the entire rotation is pitching worse. Which leads me to question, did someone get a whole lot worse at defense? Like, who's the worst defender on the team? 
Why are you only showing me pictures? Please stop. Okay. It looks like center field and left field are both issues. You know what? I've got to believe this is just early season jitters. As stupid as that sounds, because I don't frankly have a better solution to the problem. I can't deal with my entire defense collapsing. And I don't think the defense is the problem. Uh, we have the ninth best defense efficiency, the sixth best zone rating. And I think just getting Daniel Cabrera back will be a big deal for the offense. Are you fucking shitting me? All right. I'm putting you on notice, you piece of crap, PJ Mainville. One more player gets hurt, you're fired. This is fucking ridiculous. Like, every single person that can get hurt is getting hurt, and they're getting hurt for the season. And you're supposed to be amazing at preventing arm injuries. I am not happy right now. The sheer number of injuries we've been hit with this season, and these aren't minor injuries either, is just, come on. Um, that bullpen spot needs to be filled now. Um... I may have to take a, a reliever early on in the draft. Uh, Maldonado, I just need somebody. I don't think you're that good, but I just need an arm in the bullpen. Uh, you're no longer the stopper. I can't trust you anymore. You have repaid my faith in you by just getting lit up. And by handing out home runs like they are candy. So please don't do that. Uh, the new closer is, I think, fine. I, again, I think we're still okay to just let whoever take the saves. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Draft time. Uh, I'm not even going to bother looking at anyone until we are where we need to be. There we go. Um, There's a couple of interesting pitchers here. It looks like it's a very much a pitching heavy first round. Uh, so we have two starters of interest to us. Sonny Hoskins and Dan Meggs. Let's start by looking at Sonny. Uh, Sonny is your prototypical flamethrower who's got a bevy of very good pitches but whose movement is borderline. Now maybe that won't be a big issue uh, and he is a lefty and we haven't had a great lefty in the rotation to back up Lighter in a long time. I don't think Lighter's a lefty. I think Lighter's a righty too. Yeah, my entire rotation is right-handed. Um, so that immediately could be a nice pick for us. But there's also Dan Meggs, who is a righty, but who offers a more well-rounded package. Um, he offers uh, four pitches, better control, better movement, worse stuff. Oh, actually, the control is the same, really. So the question is, do I value pitch variety over movement because that's really what separates these two and the fact he's left-handed um i wonder let's look at our ballpark no righties have a little bit of an easier time of hitting homers here so movement's actually more important for a left-handed pitcher uh, makes us also younger, which means I won't have to push him quite as hard. But I just love how many pitches Hoskins has. And they can all be plus pitches, with the exception of his changeup. Uh, 
Oh, this is what you get paid the big bucks for. Doctor of Indian. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay, let me kind of work this out in my head. Movement doesn't automatically guarantee that you keep it in the park. What does actually OTP say about movement? Oh, this, this text, come on. Really? Who decided to make this text gray? Yuck. All right, I'm gonna click on help index. What the crap? I don't get it. I don't know why they've decided that I can't read this, but. um, Where is my phone? I'm gonna look it up on my phone where I'll actually be able to read it. I need, come on, OOTP 21 movement. I found a forum post. Movement is most definitely work is is keeping it in the park, and that is our issue, right? We're always going to have issues with home runs. We need to mitigate that to the extent that we possibly can. So I'm going to have to take the safer play. I'm going to have to go with Megs. I'm going to shortlist um, Hoskins because I want to see how he turns out, but I think I'm going to draft Megs. Because I think he's lower ceiling, but he's higher floor. And he's still going to have three plus pitches, which is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Uh, so I'm going to draft you. And then I'm going to advance to my next pick. And I will take Sonny Hoskins with the uh, my first draft of the... Uh, there we go. Why decide if you don't have to? Um, I could use more relieving talent, and Jose Castillo is definitely that. Uh, come to me, my friend. I would like to start looking at hitters, but I think it's just a really bad draft for offense. I think it's just a good draft for pitching. Uh, Tim Locke, I don't know if you're going to turn out, but there's nothing to stop me from just drafting you. So I'm going to do it. Jared Boyd is a great defensive infielder who can't hit. But maybe, maybe we'll be able to make him into a proper hitter, right? I've heard of Stranger Things. Uh, Eric Ponson is a very good second baseman in his own right, and again, could turn out to be a decent hitter. Jerry Shea, I don't care how good you are, you're free. Uh, Steve Botkin, you've got a fair bit of power, but that's pretty much it. But that could be enough for a young first baseman, right? Let's take you two. Drafted. And I think I'm at the point where I'm just going to go ahead and let the AI draft everyone else. Now let me be clear about what I'm not saying. 
I am not saying that this is the draft of Hendrix and um, Lighter. That would be ridiculous. Um, but this could be the draft of Hendrix and... I don't know, like our third best starter, maybe. Um, I will hand out everyone's demands. This is fine. And then let me also go ahead and shortlist Megs. And Castillo. The rest of these guys, I don't care about. Um, if they succeed, I will be over the moon. If they don't, I won't. What the ever-living fuck? What is wrong with you guys? How is every member of the bullpen blowing out their arm at the same time? How was that possible? I mean, look, I'm firing you, PJ Mainville. This is absurd. I'm going to find a new team trainer, and he's going to be amazing. I need someone who can heal arms real good. And do everything else pretty good as well. I really like Steve Donahue, actually. He's not great at preventing back and leg injuries or preventing injuries at all, but he's really great at recovery. And the worst thing he is is average in anything. Like, if all I cared about was, was other stuff, then Jim Clements would be great. But yeah, I'm going to hire you, Steve Donahue. Because I don't know what you're putting uh, on our team, but I'm sick of it. Uh, Sonny Hoskins, you are pitching in double A already. I guess you can just stay there then. Uh, Jose Castillo, you're fine. Like, I'm not saying it's necessarily the trainer's fault, but I have to do something. And it is just absurd how many injuries we've had this season. Um, Brian Mapp. I had no intentions of you pitching this season, but here we are. It is all hands on deck. Yeah, none of the pitchers have been that great this season. Got a new team trainer. I hope he sucks less than the last one did. Oh, um, Mr. Megs, I am taking control. No, I'm going to let the AI control you. I have no issues with that yet. Let me go up to the All-Star break. I'm, I don't want to hear about any other pitching injuries. I need you all to relax. To chill. That is not the end of the world. Um, losing him doesn't make me sad. It merely makes me grateful that Josh Roberts is a player that exists. Um, 
because he should easily be able to fill that gap. Now, can I please be at the All-Star game? Okay, I am now. Uh, let's look at the prospect game roster first. Who made it from Baltimore? Steve Willett. Luis Amaya. And Victor Salinas. Danny Moreno did not. I wonder... Oh, he's injured. Okay. All right. Um, who made the actual All-Star game? Jack Leiter made it. Okay. No one for my bullpen. Adley Rushman. Daniel Cabrera, despite the fact he's injured. And that's it. Um, let me be the first to praise Adley freaking Rushman, who sees so many injuries and then carries the team on his back. The only reason that we are in a position now to make a move in the second half of the season is Adley Rushman. Um, we frankly don't deserve his amazing abilities this season. Um, I don't like how dangerously pedestrian Jack Leiter has been this year. Like, no matter how you slice it, he's gotten worse. And maybe he's just getting older. Or maybe this is just, hey, well, I'm off to a slow start this season. I'll pick it up, don't worry. Um... And you'll notice, even Jack Leiter, at his worst, is still a an amazing starting pitcher. And Brandon Hendricks is, for better or for worse, adequate. But all we have in our rotation now is adequacy. Um, Andy Neal can't stop walking people. It's frankly absurd. Um, Oscar Pierrette is just been objectively bad. Like, he keeps getting worse. And he's under 30. And it's like, he got his big contract and now he's just coasting. But he's coasting in a way that hurts the team. And I don't have pitching options. I mean, thank goodness for Ethan Wood being at least marginally not terrible. I don't have other options. I don't have a very deep pitching farm system. So it's like, if we get a season like this, where every starter that can go poorly is going poorly, I can't do anything about it. Because what I've got is I've got... I've got a bunch of starters that are, like, average. And you know what? Maybe that'll change. And maybe everyone will get better and I can enjoy my life again. But until that time, there's just, I just don't have a ton of options. And everything tells me that, look, I should have better starters than I do right now. But I don't. And I have to just let the season continue on and hope my pitchers figure it out. Now, there is help on the way. Uh, Daniel Cabrera will be back after the All-Star break. Um, Nate Gould, uh, thank you for trying, but you're clearly not ready for the majors. Um, I will at least look and see if this is just I have to protect you. I mean, he gets right-handed pitching. He's been marginally more helpful, but I think this is just he gets benched and we get Daniel Cabrera back. Um, but the problem is, is that the other pit players that we're relying on to be like top-notch players 
are all out for the season. Uh, we had one of the league's best bullpens last season, and most of that is now gone. It's just flat gone. Uh, Brendan Hershauer was essential to our success. Uh, I had big plans for him. Garbage. Joe Jimenez, our closer last season. Who's that? Uh, Kintz Muller, who has combined uh, quality relief with being a pretty decent second base backup. Gone. And even getting Dan Cabrera back in six days is quite frankly not going to make up for just the absolute awful level of pitching that we've had this season. And maybe this is Peter Woodworth's swan song too. I don't know. Maybe it's because I got rid of Noah Syndergaard. Maybe this is the curse of Noah Syndergaard, and he's decided that oh, you're gonna you're gonna fire me. Well, I'm going to infect all of your players with evil voodoo. Uh, see how you like that. I don't like it. I don't at all. I would like to bring back Logan White. I think he's done a pretty good job of scouting. I bet he's going to want to retire. So I have to replace him too. But I think it's the end of this episode. Um, man, what a bad start to the season. And even so, we're in second place. Maybe we're just the second half team this year. Um, and maybe that's all it is. Maybe this is just, oh, my pitchers are going to figure it out. They just needed a bit more time. Um, maybe Daniel Cabrera comes back and kickstarts the offense. Um, let's give credit where credit is due. Jose Santoya has been exactly what we needed. Uh, he has been a rock star at first base. Uh, Mike Vanderplerg is... What the heck is it? Is it another Lego? Has been hitting like he's out of his mind. I love it. Daniel Corona Jr. continues to do what only Daniel Corona Jr. can do, which is hit around league average and play scintillating defense and run the bases fairly intelligently, although this season not so much. Is he overpaid? I think yes. But you know what? His defense alone is worth it. And I'm frankly surprised he's never won a gold glove. But here we are. He is what I need, and I am fine with that. Uh, Perdomo, on-base machine. Robert Moore, slightly less on-base machine. Adley Rushman, Austin Hendrick is hitting for average again. Like, if he hits 300 this season, he'll have been insane. Uh, Kieran Dongo, providing the thump that this lineup needs. And maybe he doesn't draw as many walks as I'd like, and maybe I'd also like to see more doubles, but frankly, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with all of this. The only weak spot in the lineup is happens to be the number three hitter, which is Mr. Nate Gould, and in a week he's going to be gone anyway. Um, all of this is to say the lineup is where it needs to be, if not a little ahead of the pace. Um, what we're missing is the elite level, um, pitching that we've had in the past. And friends, I just don't know what to tell you. Andy Neal is cheap cost controlled pitching. I understand that, but he's been awful. He's been just the worst. And maybe I flip him and try to fill other holes. Uh, Oscar Pierrette has been 
Over his career, he has ranged from serviceable to god-awful. And he's been god-awful the last two seasons. He cannot keep it in the park. Which is really unfortunate, because everything about his rating set suggests that he should be able to do that. But maybe not. Maybe I got suckered by his 2028 season, where if we look, his Babbitt plummeted. Because every other season, he's been getting hit. And he's been getting hit hard, and he's been getting hit often. Hendricks is fine. Um, he's maybe slipping a bit, but he's not that far removed from an excellent season. And again, I think this is just OTP decided this is the new year of offense. Deal with it. But our lineup might be good enough to carry a mediocre rotation. But the thing is, this is not a mediocre rotation. This is just a rotation that's pitched in a mediocre way so far. And I'm really hopeful that when the second half of the season comes in, we've got a new team trainer uh, that will just start putting it together. Uh, Jack Leiter is heating up. Brandon Hendricks is heating up. Ethan Wood has been pretty solid. Um, if I need to, say, pull Pierrette out of the rotation, uh, I've got other options. I've got maybe not Benoist. Uh, Brian Mapp, you are not a specialist. You're a middle reliever. Um, I mean, I guess Ben Awis is literally my... No, I've got Alex Perez. Um, there is some level of hope, but the thing I don't have is I don't have an internal option to fix the rotation if the rotation is the big weakness. Um... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. But one thing that I, I, I want you guys to think about and, and offer your suggestions is do we accept this as the price of doing business? If we miss the playoffs, I'm sure we miss the playoffs. I don't think we will. But if we do, you know what? No team can be great all the time. Or do we start trying to make increase our chance of winning a World Series this year by trading prospects for starters? And that's not a decision I have to make right now, obviously. But it is something that I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Because um, right now we have three okay starters and two actively terrible ones. And we've got a bullpen that's just... No one is having a good season. Except for Alex Perez and to a lesser extent Bruce Maldonado. Like, the entire pitching staff is crapping the bed. Simultaneously mined. And that's hard to do. But they're doing it, for better or worse. Um, I don't know. Uh, Mike Vanderplug is getting an even more inflated head. And even worse, Jose Vasquez has decided that his head is going to get super inflated. So I'm going to have to pay one of them. Uh, but thankfully, they're both just in arbitration. So I can afford to eat uh, a bigger salary for a season or so and then go from there. Um, Joe Sprake, I was going to make you a closer this season, but you have just not performed where we need you to perform. That is where we are. Uh, a disappointing season, but not an unsalvageable one. Um, and maybe this is just one of those seasons where everyone will figure it out. Maybe. Uh, if we don't, we're still very in the thick of it for the playoffs. It looks like the AL West is the division to beat this year. It's a very tough division. Um, but we're certainly not out of the playoffs. And the question that we're going to have to ask ourselves is, do we sacrifice our future to get a fourth consecutive world title? If that's even possible. And frankly, I don't know that we do. But that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and liking. It's always appreciated. Do feel free to share comments down below. But until next time, this has been Avindian. 
Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.